Welcome to the Center for Discovery's Integrated Arts Virtual Training Series. My name is Jessica Calabrese and I am the training coordinator of our Healing and Integrated Arts programs. Located less than two hours from New York City, the Center for Discovery is a major research and specialty center that offers residential, medical, clinical, and special education programs to 1,200 children and adults with complex disabilities, medical frailties, and autism spectrum disorders each year. Through this series of seminars, it is our hopes to inspire and teach others about our creative therapeutic programs and learnings and ultimately advance the standard of care for all individuals with complex disabilities. As we like to say, what happens here matters everywhere. Hello, my name is Evan Povill. I'm a senior occupational therapist here at the Center for Discovery. Hello, I'm Nick Sherman. I'm a music therapist on the Integrated Arts team. Today's seminar is Using Technology to Make Music. Why we make music. First, it's inclusive. Anyone can do it. From beginners to experts, fully independent to needing adaptations. Everyone can make music regardless of their ability. Promotes a self of connectedness with self and others. Making music is part of a group. Everyone is contributing to the creative process. Listening to other people in the group, responding to what they are playing, also connecting to yourself and what you are playing and expressing. That ties into our next point of self-expression. We all have the need to express ourselves, and music serves as a great outlet to express our emotions, from joy and excitement to anger and frustration. All feelings are 100% valid and are encouraged to be expressed through music. Boosts executive brain function. Studies suggest that playing music at an expert level or simply as an amateur can boost our working memory, processing speed, and executive function, which is the ability to plan, organize, and accomplish goals. Increases immune response. Researchers have found that listening to or playing music increases the body's production of the antibody immunoglobulin A and natural killer cells, which are cells that attack invading viruses and boost the immune system's effectiveness. Reduces stress hormone cortisol. Studies show that singing for an hour was associated with significant reductions in stress hormones such as cortisol, and increases in quantities of cytokines, which are proteins of the immune system, which can boost the body's ability to fight serious illness. And lastly, it's empowering and motivating. Music is a natural motivator and empowers people to express themselves and make connections with others. So why do I make music? I make music because it's a great way to connect with others. Throughout my career, I've played music with many different people across many different backgrounds and cultures. Since anyone can make music and it's a shared language, it breaks down the barriers of communication between people and allows everyone to be in the here and now and create something magical together. Why I personally make music, I've been drumming since I was a toddler and drummed in a number of different bands over the years and really loved the opportunity I've had through making music with other people. Um, the relationships and connectivity that uh, can be made through that. I've had a real interest in adaptive drumming groups in particular. Uh, it's something that I played around with uh, as an OT student and then was able to thankfully bring that over here to the center uh, when I started my career and have used it throughout. Um, it's something that I'm extremely passionate about, um, but also I find it's very motivating. It's just intrinsically motivating for a lot of the individuals we work with, and it allows you a really fun way to also be working really hard therapeutically at different areas of occupational therapy and working at the different skill needs that uh, the individuals we work with may have. Um, all the while, it doesn't necessarily feel like work, it just is fun. This slide shows Maslow's triangle and the hierarchy of needs. Basically at the bottom is the most essential needs. These are physiological needs, which are biological requirements for human survival, which can be food, water, air, shelter, clothing, warmth, and sleep. These are the most basic needs that everyone needs to survive. 
Once an individual's physiological needs are satisfied, the need for security and safety becomes salient. People want to experience order, predictability, and control in their lives. These needs can be fulfilled by a family, society, also police, schools, business, and medical care fall under the needs of safety. Then we move up to the next section, which is love and belonging. These are basic human emotional needs for intrapersonal relationships, affiliation, connectedness, and being part of a group. As I discussed previously, one reason why we make music is to feel connected to others, validate our emotions, and build interpersonal relationships. Next is esteem needs. These include self-worth, accomplishment, and respect. Esteem for oneself includes dignity, achievement, mastery, and independence. Through music, we can focus on love and belonging and esteem needs with the people that we work with. So on the outside of the triangle, you see motivation decreases as needs are met. So once these needs are fulfilled, you're able to move up the triangle. You're not stuck working on those things continuously. And growth needs do not stem from a lack of something, but rather a desire to grow as a person. Once these growth needs have been reasonably satisfied, one may be able to reach the highest level called self-actualization. So self-actualization is realizing a person's potential, self-fulfillment, seeking personal growth, and peak experiences. Maslow describes this level as the desire to accomplish everything that one can, to become the most that one can be. And this is a continuous process of becoming rather than a happily ever after state. And the specific form that these needs take varies differently from one person to another. For one person, it could be the desire to be an ideal mother. In another person, it may be expressed athletically. In another, it may be music or creating something. And just as a person's needs and interests are different, so is what makes them feel fulfilled and whole. Collaborative music making promotes a number of different goal areas and skill needs. For example, communication and socialization. Uh, when we're making music with each other, uh, we're communicating often in nonverbal means, um, simply by trying to listen to each other and, and what statements might be made through the music. Also helps with turn taking and sequencing skills. Visual and auditory attention, kind of go right along with it. Self-regulation, which is being able to keep ourselves at a modulated level of arousal and calmness, as well as co-regulation, which is where in us playing music together, we are helping each other feed off of that arousal level um, and calmness or uh, bringing ourselves to a more higher level of arousal so that we may be more alert, awake, and responsive. It also helps to regulate rep respiration and physiological rhythms in us all. We're working on gross motor skills as well as bilateral upper extremity coordination skills. You're working on a lot of crossing midline and using both hands together as we drum or play any other kind of instrument and stabilize. We're working on fine motor skills as well, postural strength and balance, as well as head control. And we're working on increasing motor planning and overall body awareness. Now we're gonna look at some of our low tech adaptations. Starting with the lock line and clamp, one of the most commonly used low-tech equipment that we use with adapted music are these lock line clamps with pressure activated uh, clamps on top. We use that to be able to mount our instruments onto any number of different surfaces. So for example, we have here on the tabletop, we might use the flex table surface, we might use a lap tray, on a manual wheelchair. Um, and the preference is gonna be based on, you know, there's a lot of people that may not necessarily want uh, an instrument or a mount right on their wheelchair or right in front of them. They may wanna to prefer to push it out of the way. So for some of those people, I'm gonna put it on a, a tabletop and let them kind of have a little bit of space to be able to interact with their instrument. Um, 
for a lot of people what this allows you to do is it's endlessly adjustable as you can see. So that's gonna allow you based on the um, abilities and needs and maybe what therapeutic um, skills you're working on, uh, you're able to really tailor the placement to that person. For example, somebody with spasticity uh, and, and maybe some upper extremity weakness, uh, you can actually put this right up in front of them to where you're gonna have them just be able to, if perhaps they really are limited in their reach, uh, you can have this right in front of them so it's much easier to reach out and activate and get some good sound out of the instrument. It is gonna allow somebody to have more nuanced work on motor control. So for somebody, for example, uh, in therapy, I may be working on that person using two hands for bilateral coordination. Um, I'm now able to get that person multiple sticks. They can use both hands to play or maybe their bare hands. Um, another thing that that does is it gives you a point of control to work on stabilizing and playing with the other hand. So it's not, even though it's, you may look at it as it's actually lessening the challenge, it's increasing the duration of time that you're actually working on these skills because they're still able to move this closer to them if they'd like, put their hand on to stabilize it while they're playing, and all you're doing is just creating a greater opportunity for success throughout. In this next video clip, the musician you see here is using a frame drum that's mounted to his wheelchair frame with lock line clamping the frame drum, and he's also holding a drumstick. It's positioned vertically at a height that's encouraging him to lift his head up so that he can visually engage with the musical instrument. We also have hand straps, built up handles, adapted grasp drumsticks, the universal arm and clamp, large foam industrial twist ties. Next piece of low tech equipment I want to talk about is just this neoprene adapted hand strap. This is something that was created by our rehab tech department. Um, However, I do want to add, you know, if you don't have that, you can use anything from just Velcro straps. I've even, in a pinch, used a, uh, a towel or like a bandana to do the same thing. And what you're gonna do is for somebody that maybe has some limited grasp abilities, you're gonna strap that on and have them hold on to the instrument. And now, you can still work on sustained grasp, but this strap is gonna make it so if they were to let go at all or loosen their grip, they're not going to drop the stick. You're gonna be able to, again, sustain the playing throughout, and it also keeps you, uh, the staff or therapist, it allows you the freedom to be working with other individuals in the room, maybe be working even on, say, uh, giving uh, some facilitation of posture at their shoulders without needing to be hand over hand assistance for them to, to play and, and uh, sustain their grasp on the stick or instrument. Another adaptation that's been helpful is just this built up foam tubing. Uh, it's cylindrical and it allows you to put uh, something like the drumstick through there. So somebody, again, with uh, some weaker grasp or some limitations, it's a little bit easier for them to hold on to and sustain. You might even use this alongside in conjunction with something like the straps. Um, but just another um, tool that we have available. Along the same lines, we have combining kind of the strap with the built-up handle, we have the universal tool holder. And what it does is it allows you to strap it onto the back of somebody's hand. 
And then we have an adjustable clamp on top that's gonna allow us to put something like a drumstick or you can even use something like say a tambourine and strap that on, okay? And once that's fastened, they have this adaptable grip that they're able to, you can move the angle um, depending on what you're gonna be using. And again, it's going to hold the instrument for them and they're gonna have that adaptive grasp handle that they can more easily play. One other tool I wanna to show you is, this is just an adapted grasp mallet. Uh, it's a T-handle here, and what this does, and something like it, is allow somebody with perhaps a more pronated posture of their forearm to be able to grasp a little differently. And if they can't get that neutral position of their hand, have success in holding this mallet and striking the drum or xylophone, whatever it may be. One other tool I wanna to talk about low tech is just these industrial foam coated twist ties. Uh, what this does and where we've been using them kind of off label is using them with, a lot of times we are in a rooms with a lot of, uh, you may have some medical equipment such as the IV poles or even just any kind of uh, uh, switch mount. And what you can do is simply twist this around and you can hook a device such as your tambourine We could have that hanging right in front of the individual so that, again, it's another thing for them for visual attention and having more success with it moving back and forth but not needing to be grasped, not falling in place. And so it does allow for somebody with a more, um, less refined motor pattern to be able to swipe at it and still be able to interact musically. Here you will see an example of an industrial foam twist tie being used with a tambourine on an IV pole. It is positioned shoulder height to encourage this musician to reach and play the tambourine. She plays completely independently. You will also see a twist tie being used around an individual's wrist to help play the bass. The bass guitar is ratchet strapped to a tabletop, which can be moved higher or lower and angled towards or away from the participant. Both examples are simple low-tech adaptations to facilitate success and maximize independence. We also have simple mechanical devices, motorized switch adapted equipment such as the switch activated stamper, the music machine, as well as switch activated bongos. We can also use step-by-step -step switches. Another good use of the mounted drums is for use with the music machine over here, which is a switch activated motorized um, striker. Uh, it'll raise and lower the instrument, whether you put in a drumstick or a maraca, some kind of shaker of some sort. Um, and when used in, in combination, it allows you somebody with switch activation to strike the drum. So here we have some switch adapted bongos. Um, so an individual can use these by activating a switch with either their hand or their head, depending on the best placement for the individual for them to access and activate the switch. So with the bongos, you also have another port so you can have two people playing side by side and have collaboration that way, or you can have one individual with several switches and activate each drum separately. Let's talk about some high-tech adaptations. First is iPad accessories and apps. These include GarageBand and Skoog. So here we have a Skoog, which is a MIDI control system, so it's activated as you see by touch. And we have that Bluetooth connected to the iPad, which is then uh, directly connected to the speaker. Um, and I, I like to connect it with an uh, audio cable, so that way there's no delay between the tactile input and the sound that the resident will hear. Um, we're also combining 
a little high tech and low tech uh, simultaneously in this. We have the universal mount arm, which is holding and supporting the scoop. And the nice thing about using this style of um, mount is you can position it more easily for the individual to use based on their preferences. And this type of mount is really good because once you lock it in place, it's not going anywhere. It's, so it's not like the lock line and clamps where it can be manipulated and moved once uh, it's in place. This stays right here and it will not move. So the great thing about the Skoog is this is your interface when you open the application. So there's all your different settings and features here on the top that you can go through. You can change the instrument by hitting the little guitar icon and then tapping you know, what you would like. Then you have your settings. You can adjust the sensitivity, which is important, and the threshold, and then the response. Another really cool feature in this is you can actually have the individual play along with songs from either your iTunes or your Spotify right from this menu. It will also adjust the keys. So with the Skoog, you can also use the onboard application that's uh, in most iPads called GarageBand. So this is GarageBand. Now we can use the Skoog to control individual instruments in GarageBand. We can change through the many different instruments by using the instrument icon and then select you know, a variety of different instruments through here. And it's important to note, once you're in GarageBand, we have to go back to Skoog, go to MIDI, and turn audio on off to the off cycle. Because if you don't, you'll have this application Skoog working with GarageBand, but they'll be clashing because you have this audio on. So we'll turn that off, go back to GarageBand, and now, if Evan, you wouldn't mind, we'll have single notes come through. This next video clip shows a musician using, again, the iPad mounted with GarageBand app open, and he's playing a guitar. What I really like to show in this clip is the fact that it's really important to be patient when you're working with individuals and allow them to express themselves when they want to and when they feel the need, as you'll see here in this clip. He wasn't ready immediately upon cueing. So in this high-tech adaptation, you will see GarageBand being utilized on the iPad. We have the iPad mounted on a universal arm and clamp positioned in front of her so she can use her left arm to play on the electric piano. You can also use the Skoog in a similar setup as desired. Play it again. You're on candy camera. Come on. Ah! Ah! Nice. Did you hear it? Ah. Did you hear it? Do it again. Ah. Do it again. Ah! Next, we have the Ami. Google Creatability, Switch Ensemble, Quintet, Sound Moves Music Bands, and Makey Makey. Another great high-tech device that we've been using is the Quintet. Uh, what this is is a self-contained switch-activated music machine, and it allows you to pick from five different inputs. Uh, we have different music that has been programmed in. Uh, in this case, we've got some drums and percussion sounds. Input number one is a drum set. Plug our interface into there. Actually, we'll leave that in there. Use another switch here. Input two is bongos.
Number three is a triangle. And now what you can do is have multiple people with switches sequencing themselves together and blending into the musical soundscape. Next thing I'm gonna talk about are these motion activated Bluetooth sensors called sound moves. Um, there are a number of different um, products out there. Uh, this happens to be one of the easier ones to connect to. Uh, so you turn on your wristband, make sure your Bluetooth is on on your phone or iPad, and make sure you connect. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna select on your screen, there's a number of different sounds um, from different piano tones, drums, uh, and what I actually enjoy a lot is these uh, music samples. And once you connect it, okay, so any movement is going to trigger the sound. Places that this is really good for is not only does it encourage active movement, which is great for exercising, encouraging uh, gait training, walking, um, but it's also a really neat thing that we found is putting this on either the person or even an object such as like say a broomstick um, and encouraging making more motivating an activity that may also be a little less preferential, say laundry folding. You go ahead and hook this onto the laundry board and as they fold, they're getting some musical feedback that's going to encourage it. It's gonna be motivating as well. In this next video clip, the musician shown here is demonstrating the use of the AMI or Adapted Use Musical Instruments program on the laptop. It's using the webcam there to take video of him, in which case we have superimposed the keyboard that's at the bottom of the screen into a very small grid so that his hand movements are actually activating each key. And we've selected some interesting percussion sounds of which he's playing a blues scale to. In this next video clip, you're going to see the musician here using a very cool piece of technology called the Phonotonic. It is a Bluetooth enabled motion detection sensor that creates music from detected movement. In this case, the musician has the Phonotonic is taped onto the maraca that he's holding so that he can simply use the grass that he has to shake the maraca and create music along with it. In this case, some jazzy piano. If you go slow, <laughs> nice, Sam. Right. Another high-tech equipment that I'm going to talk about is the use of a laptop or a desktop computer and some USB switch interfaces. Uh, what is out there is there are a number of um, usually free uh, applications and software that can convert a switch 
hit uh, into music. So where you can actually choose different things. For example, I pulled up one thing called Makey Makey. There will be some links uh, at the end uh, for resources. This one, for example, has different musical samples that you can map out to different keystrokes and then correspond to your switch hits through this interface. So all I'm gonna do, I already have this pulled up and I'm gonna plug in my USB port, plug in a wireless switch and a soft pillow switch. Okay. All right, if I hit the switch. So we have a lot of different options on here. This is just the, the music sample one. There's also a virtual piano, uh, a variety of other virtual instruments and really fun, high quality sounds uh, that I think really level the playing field in that you can have people with all different abilities playing together and they're gonna sound really good. In summary, when facilitating a music experience, one of the best things about music is that it is accessible to all. Anyone can facilitate a music activity, even someone that feels they have no music skills. Through the internet, we have virtually unlimited resources that can be utilized in many different ways. One way that you can facilitate is by putting on a drum track or background music via YouTube, Spotify, or any other way you listen to music. And use any of the adaptations that we've mentioned here to set up the individual for success. Sometimes it's really nice to be able to have that music playing in the background. It frees you up to be able to either facilitate or join in with them. As mentioned earlier when we were discussing Maslow's triangle, two basic needs are love and belonging and esteem needs. By playing music with someone else or helping them express themselves through adaptations, we're ultimately providing them with a greater sense of independence achievement, and that in turn increases self-worth. Through this, there's a development of an interpersonal relationship with that individual, as well as a sense of connectedness in the individual or group experiences. A few short tips in conclusion, keep it simple. Make sure you take the time to set up beforehand. Remember to be patient. Sometimes the musical experience takes time. It may not be on the same timetable that your individual that you're working with is. And adapt these things for your own activities. And here's a slide of available resources we've created for you to use. Thank you so much for joining us today and I really hope you enjoyed our seminar on using technology to make music.